Welcome back. So we're going to take a look at the uh, parallel circuits now. As you can see on the screen, I've got a uh, parallel circuit with three resistors. Um, made these resistor values 15, 10, and 5 ohms, so there's a good variety in what their values are. And you should know that for parallel circuits, uh, as we've seen anyways in class when we're doing uh, circuit kits, that if you add things in parallel, adding a separate branch of a circuit for charge flow, that does not affect each branch that's already there. So here I've got uh, the three resistors. If I connect them, you can see the conventional charge flow going. It's the 15 ohm resistor. It's not particularly going too quick. It's a little bit quicker uh, in terms of the pacing there. The charge flow rate's greater for the 10 ohm resistor. Less resistance, more charge flow. And then for the 5 ohm resistor, it's considerably uh, greater charge flow. But if I were to break this circuit, and keeping an eye on that 15 ohm resistor uh, all the way over on the left side, it's the same. It's no change. The charge is flowing at the same exact rate if I connect it or disconnect this other resistor. So each path has its own charge flow. And we want to see how Ohm's law works for this. Uh, we want to do some measurements and uh, see what we get. Because it appears that the charge flow rate here is different for each resistor, whereas in the series circuit, the charge flow is the same. So let's go ahead and hook up the voltmeter here on the uh, first resistor here, and I'm getting nine volts. Okay, well, hold on, this, this is a nine volt battery, right? So it's a nine volt battery, and I'm measuring the voltage for the first resistor, it's nine volts. I measure the voltage for the second resistor, it's nine volts for the third resistor it's nine volts so each resistor is hooked up directly to the battery there's every charge that leaves the battery that enters the wire when it eventually gets pushed towards a path of the circuit each path has equal opportunity for the charge to move through there's no reason it has to go through one uh, versus the other so whichever charge it uh sorry whichever resistor it goes through it has its full energy to use up so each charge has nine volts of electric potential when it enters that branch of the circuit and it uses up those nine volts when it passes through the resistor. That means that we're gonna have three separate currents for each of these separate uh, paths of charge flow. Uh, and I can go ahead and calculate them up here real quick on the calculator. We've got nine volts divided by 15 ohms. We give us 0.6 for the uh, first uh, path right there. We would uh, take 9 volts divided by 10 ohms for the second. So a smaller resistor gives us a larger charge flow. And then lastly, we'll take our 9 volts and we'll divide it by the 5 ohms for the third resistor. And again, we get an even larger amount of charge flow. So less resistance, more charge flow. Now, if we were to try to apply something like series circuits to this, where we could say that there's some total amount of uh, resistance for the circuit, it's pretty straightforward for a series circuit. Parallel circuit, it's not going to be that straightforward. So we can calculate the charge flow in each resistor using Ohm's law pretty quickly, but trying to figure out what the total resistance of a circuit is gets a little bit more complicated. So let's take a look at that. So here I've got a drawing of a parallel circuit, R1, R2, and R3. And uh, as we scroll up here real quick, as we saw with the series circuit, there's only one path for charge flow, so there's only one current. And that one current is moving through each resistor, so that each, uh, each resistor is going to use up some of the total battery voltage when the charges move through them. They use up some of their energy that's available. and that's how we could calculate an answer for total resistance. We could add up, uh, we could figure out what the current was in the circuit, use that for the whole battery, and then we would be able to find out the total resistance of the circuit. For parallel, it's not so straightforward. As you take a look at this equation setup, it can be a little daunting, but if we were to calculate out what the current was in each resistor, like we just did, I could say that there's some current I1 passing through resistor R1, there's some current I2 passing through R2. And lastly, there's some current I3 
passing through R3. And each of those currents have to be supplied by the battery. So I've got charge flow I'm leaving the battery. That's I3, I2, and I1. All three of those are coming together out of the battery and then they split off into the different branches. So that means there's one giant current leaving the battery, which I can call I total, or IT as I have it down below, that's equal to all three of those added up. So the current is what it gets split up in a parallel circuit. The voltage gets split up in a series circuit. The current gets split up amongst the many branches in a parallel circuit. And every time you add a new branch, you don't deter charge flow from the other. So if I did not have the third resistor there, if I were to remove it, the charge flow through the first and the second resistor would remain unchanged. They're completely separate. But every time I add a new path, that means that the charge flow from the battery has to compensate and try to push more charges out, which can drain batteries pretty quick. So if we're thinking of this in terms of uh, D cell batteries, it's not going to last as long if you have more things hooked up in parallel. Now, how does this all work out in terms of the calculation? So to figure out the total resistance of a circuit, in series we just added it up. That was quick. But in parallel, it's the currents that add up, not the voltages. So if we take a look at the way that I have it set up on the screen here, I've got the three different currents for resistor one, resistor two, and resistor three added up, and that gives me some total current in the circuit. But if we remember Ohm's law, the equation that voltage equals current multiplied by resistance for any circuit element, I can substitute in I is equal to V over R for each of those currents. So I1 would be V1 over R1, and I2 would be V2 over R2, etc. So as I've got it here on the screen, you can see that we can just make that substitution, and uh, the total current would then be V total over R total. Stick with me. Now, the catch, of course, is that the voltage is the same everywhere. As we saw in our little simulation here, it doesn't matter which resistor we hooked up to, it was always nine volts. So V1, V2, V3, V battery, they're all nine volts. So if every voltage in this circuit is the same, then we can just use our algebraic skills and say that we can cancel out, or we can technically divide away that voltage from each side. And we get the result over here that's a very, cumbersome and ugly equation that nobody likes using, but that's officially the equation that relates the resistance of individual resistors in parallel to the total resistance of a circuit. Now in terms of putting that into a calculator, I much prefer to write it out like this, um, but I go even further sometimes, uh, which by the way, by taking the 1 over RT that we have right there, and inverting that, taking it to the negative one power, we get RT. And this whole other side of the equation with the one over R1, one over R2, we have to invert that as well, and we get this expression down below. But in terms of typing it fractionally, a lot of people have trouble, so I often write it that RT is equal to parentheses, R1 to the negative one, plus R2 to the negative one, plus R3 to the negative one. And then all that, after you calculate all those things, gets taken to the negative one power. Now, let's go ahead and see if we can get a result here. Um, one thing to note is that if you have a series circuit, if you keep adding more and more resistors, it seems like there's more and more resistance and it adds up in the circuit. Charge flow drops as you add more resistors. However, as I was kind of alluding to here in a parallel circuit, every time you add a resistor in parallel, it's a new path for charge flow, and that means the battery has to supply more charge flow, so I keep adding and adding and adding currents, and when you have more current from Ohm's law point of view, if I want that current I there to increase, then the resistance value needs to decrease. So as I add more resistors in parallel, 
it seems like there's less overall resistance. And this is where this inverse addition comes in. But let's try out a problem here. So suppose we have the same 10, 20, and 30 ohm resistors that were connected in series up above. Now they're connected in parallel. What's the total resistance in the circuit? So I've got my R1, R2, and R3 values. Now I want to know the R total. Now, officially, this would be 1 over R total equals 1 over 10 ohms plus 1 over 20 ohms plus 1 over 30 ohms. People always screw up on that. They end up trying to add the denominators together and saying, oh, it's 1 over 60. Cool, I'm done. No, you got to add like, um, sorry, you got to have a common denominator before you can add. It gets cumbersome. So instead of doing that, which I find annoying, we're going to write that RT is equal to 10 to the negative 1 plus 20 to the negative 1 plus 30 to the negative 1 and then all that to the negative 1 power. Now for this you're going to have to uh, break out your calculator and uh, I've got my graphing calculator right here so I'm going to type it in there and see what I get. 10 negative 1 plus 20 negative 1 plus 30 negative 1 and parentheses all that to the negative 1 power and I get a resistance of 5.45, which is considerably less than any one of those resistors. But like I said, if you keep adding resistors in parallel, you keep increasing the charge flow of the battery into the battery, remember batteries are stupid, to the battery it seems like there's less resistance. There's more doorways open that it can push charge flow through. Now, the second part of that, what is the current in each resistor? Well, we can calculate that off to the side here and use I1 is equal to V1 over R1, I2 is equal to V2 over R2, and I3 is equal to V3 over R3. Now, the catch here, of course, is all those voltages are the same. So you'd have 9 over 10, 9 over 20, and 9 over 30. So go ahead and calculate those up and see what you get.